Very hard work, yeah. But I also believe in high satisfaction. Is it right? So we'll see. Uh, senior design presentations, senior design project presentations for uh, fall 2009 uh, are divided into two sessions. Each session of about one hour, and we have a break in the middle. I would like to remind each team that you have about 15 minutes for your talk and about five minutes for a discussion. Uh, you should not exceed the time limit. Now, watch me closely, I will be here, and I will show you the signs. And this is five minutes, one minute. <laughs> At that moment, I will have to stop you. <laughs> it doesn't matter that you have a video running, I really have to uh, manage the time. So without further ado, please, I uh, would like to welcome the first team. has become an essential factor. The vision is to be able to connect to the internet anywhere and everywhere. And for that vision, we introduced the hybrid power repeater Link Roamer 493. Coming together for this project, we have the group leader, Boris, and the group member are Alex, Omar, and myself, Luke Wing. Now, what is Link Roamer 493? This is a solar, wind, and or AC power relay station. Implementing a uh, microchip router board 493 as its core, it supports up to three FCC Part 15 compliance wireless card. It can act as a router, access point, bridge, as well as repeater, using both directional and omnidirectional antennas to extend the range. It has two batteries, supporting up to 12 hour continuous operation without external power source. Using the NEMA 40 weather enclosure, it supports the interior of the box without for, um, for changes in weather conditions. Now Alex will talk about the microchip router ball. When we first started our project, we were going to use a different hardware platform, but after a month of trying to program an operating system to run on it, we decided to use a different hardware platform, and that's the microchip router board 493. Uh, we uh, decided to use this board for several different reasons. Uh, first being its extensive functionality. Uh, it can be a firewall, switch, router, uh, wireless router, uh, a bridge, all in one uh, platform. It supports up to three wireless radio cards, and with the latest iteration of its operating system, it can support 100%. Uh, it also has low power consumption, uh, about 12 watts max with three radio cards installed and it can use a command line interface or a GUI for, config for configuration. Three wireless uh, interfaces were used, WLAN 1, 2, and 3. The first one, WLAN 1, is set up to use 802.11b uh, for a link between the router board and an access point. It was also set up as a DHCP client, so it can request and obtain an IP address from, from the access point. WLAN 3 is set up uh, using 802.11n, and this serves as a broadcast network for uh, clients and hosts to connect to using a different uh, IP, IP address range than that of the access point. And it's set up as a DHCP server so that client computers connecting to it can obtain a uh, IP lease from the router board. And the last interface, WLAN 2, is set up using 802.11a, um, and it's going to it can serve as a wireless distribution system between the uh, router board and other similar devices like other relay stations to create a, uh, a network of networks. And it uses the five gigahertz band for this. Uh, network and network address translation <coughs> was used for communication between WLAN one and WLAN three, so that the access point will only see one IP address coming from the uh, from the router board. And uh, RIP version 2 is used for the routing protocol. And as you can see here, 
we have the two different types of wireless cards that we use. The one is the Ethereos 5213. Uh, this was used for WLAN 1 and WLAN 2. And the other one is the Microtik R52N, which is used for w WLAN 3 using 802.11n. Now here's a, uh, a typical topology of how this uh, power device would be used. You have the, uh, the base network with the access point. WLAN 1 is linked to it. And WLAN 3 uses uh, dual antennas for uh, broadcasts on its network. You can see a client computer linked to that. Now on WLAN 2, uh, it's linked to other relay stations. We encountered several problems uh, along the way. Uh, first off, there's a little documentation on the basic aspects of how to program this board. Uh, and also, 802.11n support was just implemented about two months ago. So I had to go through a lot of trial and error on how to uh, configure the board for uh, 802.11n and how to work it all together. So as a result, I created my own user's guide so that uh, anybody else who wants to uh, set up a project such as this uh, can follow my step-by-step -step guide. Uh, the other big problem was that uh, I couldn't communicate between a computer on WLAN 3 and the access point. And this turned out to be a DNS settings issue where the board has to use the same DNS uh, server as the access point. All right, uh, I'm going to talk about the circuitry design. The first circuit is the charge controller. Uh, as you know, the charge controller uh, prevents the overcharge uh, of the battery. And also, our uh, circuit allows for uh, controlling the threshold voltage. And we also have uh, LEDs, as you can see in the right side, bottom of the top circuit. Uh, those are for showing that the battery is fully charged. And the circuit in the bottom is the oscillator. This controls the clock of the flip-flops. The next circuit is the undercharge protection uh, circuit. It uh, disconnects the battery from the radio board as it's shown on the right top, top right side, when the charge of the battery is uh, low. And this, of course, is designed <coughs> to prevent damage to the battery. The next circuit is the dump load controller. Uh, this circuit prevents uh, the wind turbine from uh, spinning too fast and uh, <coughs> the, when the battery is disconnected. And the power from the and the power from the wind turbine is uh, directed to uh, dump, uh, dump load resistors. 